so here I'm showing a solid square based pyramid which is the diagram below and I'm told that the base of the pyramid is a square of side six centimeters so I can see that here this length is six centimeters and then this length this length and this length are also all six centimeters because the base is a square I'm then told that the height of the pyramid is four centimetres. So I can see that this line here from the centre of the base to the top of the pyramid point V is going to be four centimetres, that distance there. And finally, I'm told that M is the midpoint of BC and VM and it's equal to five centimetres. So this is BC. And then VM, the line, is going to be equal to 5 centimetres and M is this midpoint on BC. So, we're then asked to draw an accurate front elevation of the pyramid from the direction of the arrow. So this is the direction, we're going looking at the pyramid in this direction and we're asked to draw what it would look like. So we're basically going to be seeing one face of this shape. We're going to be seeing the front face. And I know that the length of the base here is going to be six centimetres. And I'm going to see this. This is going to be at the bottom of the front elevation. So I can draw a six centimetre line at the bottom. And if I take each small square to equal one centimetre, we have a six centimetre line here. I can label that one up. And then if I look at the diagram, looking from this direction, this face and the face obscured here, as well as the back face, are all going to be obscured by this front face that we're looking at. So at the front, in the front view, we're simply going to see this triangle here, AVB. That's all we're going to see looking at this square based pyramid from the front. So we're basically going to be looking at a triangle. Now the height of the triangle isn't going to be this five centimetres. That's a diagonal height across this distance. It's going to be this four centimetres here, which is the distance V is from the line AB vertically. So V is four centimetres vertically above the line AB. And V is going to be halfway in between A and B horizontally, so three squares in between, so I can mark that point up. And then it's going to be four squares above, so one, two, three, four. This is the point where V is going to sit. And then I can just attach point these points to this top of the triangle, and it's going to leave us with an isosceles triangle. So this length down the centre is going to be four centimetres. So it's an isosceles triangle that we will see with a base length of six centimetres and then a height of four centimetres. And that's going to gain us both of the marks here for understanding that it's going to be a triangle firstly and then for getting the correct side lengths and orientation of the triangle. And now I'm asked to work out the total surface area of the pyramid. So I can see from the diagram, this pyramid is made up of its square base. So this face, which is on the bottom, and then four identical triangular faces, which are all going to have the same area. So the surface area here is effectively one lot of the square base. And then we're going to be adding on four lots of these triangular faces because there are four triangular faces. And then I can start here by looking at the square base as it's going to be easier to work with. It's AB is on length six, BC is also six centimetres, they're all going to be six centimetres. So the area here is simply going to be six multiplied by six and that gives us an area of 36 for the base. And now we need to add on four lots of the area of one of the triangular faces. So if I redraw the diagram of one of these triangles, I can then take the base length, so six centimetres here, and then this length of the triangle. 
Now, this isn't going to be the height of the pyramid. It's not going to be this four centimetres. It's going to be the distance between the top of the triangle and the midpoint on its base. So the distance VM, which we're told is five centimetres. So I now know that this one's five centimetres. Now, the area of a triangle is going to be the a half base times height. And in this case, it's going to be a half times the base, which is six, times the height of the triangle, which we've calculated to be five. And that gives me an answer of 15. So now I have the area of the square base and an area of one of the triangular faces. I can do, I can simply add them together. So I have the 36 for the square base. And I'm going to be adding on four lots of these triangular faces, the area of that. So four times 15. And that's going to give me 36 plus 60, which gives me a final answer of 96. Now, this question is worth four marks here. So it's going to require quite a bit of working out. And as we can see in the question, we are given the units for each of the lengths. And there's no play, there's no units predetermined in this question. So in order to obtain the last mark, we're going to have to work out the units. And we're working with area, so surface area, and that's going to give us a unit of something squared and here we're working with centimetres so I've done six times six centimetres multiplied by centimetres which is effectively what I've done is going to give me the unit of centimetres squared which is the unit for area in this case so to give my final answer and gain all four of the marks I'm going to write 96 centimetres squared so if I go back through and see exactly where I picked each of the marks up individually, the first mark would be for working out the area of one of the triangular faces, so getting that 15. Secondly, for then working out the total surface area, so by taking the 4 multiplied by 15 and adding on the 6 multiplied by 6 to get this surface area for attempting that, and the third marks for obtaining the correct answer of 96, so this numerical answer here, that gets me the third mark. And then the final mark is for the units. Putting the units on the end, the centimetres squared, gains the fourth mark in this question.